I don't know about you, but I am incredibly excited because all the mods 10 just dropped. Huge kudos to the all the mods team. Within like a week of the latest version of Minecraft coming out, they had I think 81 to 87 different mods ported over, set up and ready to go for all the mods 10. I'm incredibly excited to get to play this pack with my friends and I'm sure you are too because that's why you're watching this video. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through step by step exactly how to make your own servers so that you and your friends can play all together in the same world. All right, now before we get too far in the video, if you find yourself at the end of this video realizing that you don't have the server hardware to really host your own server that your server is incredibly laggy and you don't have the ability to both play the mod pack and host the mod pack at the same time or you find that this video is just too complicated and you can't figure out the steps for it. I've got a solution for you. And that solution is to go check out today's sponsor, Fairy Byte. They're a game server hosting company that offers the latest Ryzen 9 CPUs to keep your servers running fast and lag free at incredibly reasonable price. They also, for the sake of simplicity, offer instant setup for all kinds of Minecraft servers, including Java, Bedrock, Forge, Fabric, Paper, Spigot, whatever you want to set up, they can host it. You can also choose from any of the regions they have set up across the world to make sure that you have as quick ping response as possible. And on top of all of that, if you use the code John Hall, you can save $5 at checkout or the code John Hall 20 and save 20% over your total cost. For all the mods 10 specifically, I would recommend going with a server that has at least six gigabytes of RAM. That seems to be the bare minimum you can get away with with this pack. There's a link to their website at the top of the description. Thank you so much to Barry Byte for sponsoring this video. Step number one in installing your all the mods 10 server is going to be downloading the correct version of Java. I've said it a hundred times. If you run into any issues with your server at all, make sure you come back to this point right here to verify that you have the correct version of Java installed because that is 98% of all of the issues I see when people try to set up servers by themselves. For all the mods 10, you're gonna search Chrome or you know search Google search, whatever, for Java 21. This is the version that you have to have in order for your server to work correctly. You should be able to just click the top link. Down under here, you're going to have a Windows installer Click on that, you're going to download it, and from there, just walk through the installation. You have to click next twice, and then you click close at the end. That's all you have to do. Now, in order to verify that the version of Java that you're using is correct, if you open up Command Prompt by going to the Windows button, typing in CMD, clicking Enter, type in here the command Java space dash version. And when you hit enter, if it does not show you Java 21, then that's your problem. So then all you have to do is go to add and remove programs if it shows a different version or actually install Java 21 if it doesn't show any version at all. Step number two is to download the All The Mods 10 server files. The easiest way to do this is just go to Chrome and search for All The Mods 10. Somewhere near the top, I suspect it'll be higher on Chrome here in the next couple of days. You'll see this CurseForge page that'll show you all the mods 10 download. So please select that. And then what you're gonna do, once you select that, you'll notice that there are a couple different tabs on here. You can either scroll down on the side and there will be a server pack here for you, or you can click on files up here at the top and under the latest version, there will also be a server pack here as well. It'll be under additional files, server file 0.2. So we're gonna go ahead, click on that, download the file. Those are the two different places you can go to find that. Again, we just kinda have to wait for this to finish downloading. All right, so it's finished downloading. We're gonna open the file location. Usually this goes directly to your download. So we're gonna right click that, click copy. We're gonna go ahead and create a new folder on our desktop here. We're gonna probably call this folder ATM 10. Open it up once you're inside of it, click paste inside of there, right click, go to properties, go to unblock, click apply and okay. The reason you have to do that is sometimes when the server goes to actually install, there will be files that it can't reach inside of this zipped folder because those files are still blocked. If you do not unblock everything at the root, of the zip file itself. And if that makes no sense to you and you have issues eventually and you're rewatching this video, make sure that you did that step. So we've done that. Next, we right click on it. We go to extract all and we click extract. So that'll take all of the files out of the zip file and then put it directly into this folder that we're currently in. 
All right. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and navigate in here. You'll notice that there's a couple different things in here. The first thing we're gonna change is this user JVM art. This is gonna be where we can change the minimum and maximum RAM for our server and several other things in here that they go ahead and put in for you. I'm gonna be able to dedicate about 15 gigs of RAM to this server. So we're gonna put our maximum, which would be the XMX at 15 gigs. Then we're gonna set our minimum here, which is the XMS to 12 gigs. Go ahead and click save on that close out of it. And then you'll notice inside of this server, there is a batch file called start server. Basically, all you have to do is double click this file. Now I will let you know it's going to download a lot of stuff, install a whole bunch of stuff. Don't worry about this. It's going to run through a whole bunch of different things. And it'll tell you at the end, once it's finished setting everything up, basically the message it gives you is that, Hey, everything's been downloaded and you're good to delete this file if you want. Yeah, there you go. You can delete the installer file now if you wish. Now this will not start on its own for one reason. The end user license agreement has not been accepted yet. So in, uh, you'll notice that it'll catch there on the failed to load EULA.txt, basically telling you, you have to accept the end user license agreement in order to continue. Now, all you have to do in order to do that is come right down here to the EULA.txt, double click it, open it up. You're gonna change this false right here to true. If you can spell right, true, save it. You can then close out of it. And you'll notice next time this mod pack tries to run through all of that, it'll start right up. So that's all you have to do from here your entire server will start straight up. All right, now the only other thing that's really important to mention is how you should allow other people to connect to your server. There's two different ways for two different situations. Number one is if somebody is on the same local network as you, if somebody's at your house on your Wi-Fi or plugged into your router, that's the easiest method. And in order to do that, all you have to do is from the machine that's running the server, type in a command called IP config forward slash all, hit enter, and you're gonna be looking for an IPv4 address, very similar to that, that your friends can use to connect to your server. All they'll do is take this address and put it in the server address box inside of all the mods 10, and they'll be able to join your server. Now, for somebody that's not on your network, what I recommend doing is what's called port forwarding. And this is the easiest way to do it. Usually your router will have settings that will allow you to do this, but I can't show you exactly how to do it because every single router is a little bit different. What I can tell you, is in order for your server to work, you will need to port forward the port 25565 internal to 25565 external from this IP address right here. And then once you've done that, all you have to do is go to Chrome, type in what is my IP or what is my public IP, click enter, and it'll tell you exactly what your IP address is. That public facing IP address is exactly what you would give to anybody that's not on your local home network so that they can connect to this server machine itself. So make sure you have your public IP and that's what you're giving to people not on your network and then make sure you have port forwarding set up, then you should be good to go. Look, I hope you found this video helpful. If the steps were too complicated or if there was anything that I didn't explain well or I went too quick through or that, you know, you just have questions about in general, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I answer pretty much every comment that I get on this channel. So I'll definitely see your comment. Don't forget that if you can't host a server yourself, you can always use Berry Byte. Use code John Hall and John Hall 20 to save $5 or 20% off. It also helps support the channel and allows me to keep doing this. So I appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.